the NBA season set to resume in just 11 days as our Rachel Nichols joins us now from Orlando. Rachel, now that teams have gotten used to life in the bubble, what are players saying has changed with their team dynamics compared to their usual setups at home? Yeah, it's interesting because there's no games yet. There's definitely a lot of hangout time going on, right? So three of the Celtics players had this hotly contested swim race yesterday. Uh, I will say there were allegations that Marcus Smart was flopping, but, <laughs> the, you know, in the pool, that, this happens. Um, all of this is having a good and different effect on team chemistry. We talked to the Sixers yesterday. Coach Brett Brown, a few of the other players, were saying that Joel Embiid is normally not a big out-and-about guy when the Sixers are on just a regular road trip. He mostly crashes in his room. He plays video games. But here, even he goes and does the group dinner, stuff like that, because there's just so much time and opportunity to do them. And Chris Paul was telling us that on the Thunder, there's been so much intense teammate time. It's given him the chance for these really deep conversations with the younger guys on the team, on the state of the country, on social justice, how to handle yourself in the NBA. And that feels really bonding and important. Now, of course, guys, where this could go wrong for some teams is it's not just teammates the players have the opportunity to bond with here in the bubble. Remember, in the NBA, players from opposing teams can talk to each other as much as they want. They can hang out as much as they want. That's not considered tampering. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant first became so close because they were at an Olympics together. And we saw how that turned out for their respective teams and then, of course, the Nets. So mm -hmm. we could definitely get some future super teams from friendships that start here in the bubble. So watch everyone's Instagram, see who they're hanging out with. Okay, we will do that. We will do that. Meanwhile, exhibition games begin next week. So what can we expect? Well, they said for just the first exhibition game, they're going to have 10-minute quarters instead of the regular 12-minute quarters. So that's interesting. Way to ease guys in. They haven't even decided yet if they're, you know, because they're technically called scrimmages. They haven't decided yet if guys are going to wear their full uniforms or not or just practice gear. They will not be wearing the jerseys with their na with the social justice messages on the back, however. Those will not debut until the opening of the seeding games on July 30th. The other thing that's interesting, because these are scrimmages, We've had a couple of the coaches say that they're talking to each other. The Miami Heat's Eric Spolster was saying that he was talking to a couple of the teams that they're going to face in a scrimmage situation, but not in any sort of game situation because they're from opposing conferences. They wouldn't meet unless they met in an NBA Finals, that sort of thing. And so they're actually talking to each other about things that each team would want to work on and that the opposing coaches may be running sets or situations for each other. Again, they just all want to help each other out because this is such an unconventional thing to have a four-month break, three exhibition scrimmages, whatever you want to call it, and then boom, right into important games that matter for whether certain teams get in the playoffs and then a playoffs right around the corner after that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, and they're trying to get ready. Yeah, I'm with you. It is. Uh, before I let you go, I, I hear someone's getting out of quarantine very soon. Congratulations, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Very important. It's been seven days for me in this one room. We have not been allowed to leave at all, not go outside at all. There's no balcony. There's no outdoors. Oh my. I'm very excited to see the sunshine. And when I get out, I get this green bracelet taken off, which means that I have passed seven coronavirus tests in a row. I also get this, which is a little buzzer they've given us, you wear this all the time anywhere you go in the bubble, and it buzzes if you get within six feet of another human. Really? So that's going to be kind of crazy. You get a little loud alarm sound. Uh, I will say I've had several friends ask me if I could smuggle a bunch of these out of the bubble for them to just wear in their daily lives, and the answer is no. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. Uh, uh, come on, Rachel. I mean, all right. I'll find somebody I can ask that question to. I need one of those. NBA returns just 11 days. Our Rachel Nichols will have it covered from the bubble and as she goes out and about with her buzzer in Orlando. Rachel, thank you.